The country of Liberia has over 1 million personnel fit for military service, no air power or tanks, and zero amounts of naval forces. And on the other end, Egypt, the most powerful African country in terms of global firepower, has over 35 million fit for service, over 3,000 tanks, and a sizable navy fleet, making it one of the most powerful nations not just in Africa, but on Earth. But does having the best toys on the battlefield relate to being the most powerful? We'll look at the idea in this video. And so what if Egypt went to war with Africa? Does the country have enough firepower to win in modern warfare against 50 plus countries? That is what we'll discuss today on Africa Assembly. By the way, be a friend and subscribe, click the notification button to never miss our videos and like the video to help us make more content you love about our awesome continent. Let's dive in. Before we stack up Egypt against the continent, let's take a look at what the country has at its disposal in regards to firepower. The Egyptian armed forces consist of the army, the navy, air force and air defense forces. As far as manpower, Egypt has over 42 million people at its disposal, consisting of active, reserve, Sakar forces and paramilitary personnel. When it comes to land forces, Egypt has close to 4,000 tanks, 11,000 armored vehicles, 1,165 self-propelled artillery, 2,200 towered artillery, and over 1,000 rocket projectors. When it comes to the Navy, Egypt is ranked number 6 in the world alone because of the sheer amount of ships at its disposal. Boasting over 3,000 water vehicles, the variety of ships comes with corvettes, submarines, helicarriers, and frigates. The aviation branch of the armed forces comes with a total of 1,053 planes. And the last branch, the Egyptian Air Defense Forces, protects the airspace of Egypt with short and long-range anti-aircraft missiles and artillery topped with early warning radars. Egypt imports equipment from America, China, Russia, and other nations and manufactures them in-house. It has a budget of $11 billion with a debt of $77 billion US dollars. It was ranked number 9 in terms of global firepower in 2020, but has been knocked down to number 13 in the world. The might of the Egyptian army is not only determined by the amount of weapons and inventory it has, but also the quality and versatility. As the navy fleet is ranked number 6 in the world, it is capable of destroying any coastal city with its full capacity. However, if Egypt went to war with the rest of Africa, does the country have a chance of winning? First, we have to set the rules of engagement, which are no allies, no nuclear weapons, and of course, no civilians. So, in an alternate reality, if Egypt went to war with Africa, could Egypt defeat the entire continent? Egypt definitely could not engage its continent with the ground troops head-on, as it will become a battle of attrition. In a battle of attrition, the continent would send hordes of battalions towards the land borders of Egypt until it surrenders because the opposing numbers would be too much to keep at bay. If we were in the age of conquest, however, Egypt would have a chance of winning, but it would take years as Egypt would have to conquer Sudan, Chad, Libya and other surrounding countries before battling the second most powerful army in Africa, Algeria. From then on, it would unite all nations it conquers and move southward until full victory. Back to the 21st century. Conversely, Egypt could target the stronger nations in an ambush or in a hit-and-run tactic, hoping to send a message to the other nations to surrender. These countries would be Algeria, Morocco, Nigeria, and South Africa. Algeria and Morocco would be extremely difficult to defeat as they are neighboring countries and they would unite to oppose the Egyptian navy, almost to a standstill. For Egypt to defeat the duo, Egypt would have to practice a concentration of force or a defeat in detail. In this tactic, the army would focus an attack with overwhelming numbers onto a smaller portion of the opposing army and then quickly mobilize to attack other smaller points of the enemy battalion until it systematically defeats the navy and then deploy ground troops to neutralize command centers. The Egyptian army has corvettes, submarines, helicarriers, and transport ships that can move tanks and infantry. Additionally, the battleships of Egypt can fire missiles 180 kilometers away from base, which could neutralize coastal cities. The defining victory blow would come with the use of mines. Algeria and Morocco combined only have about three mine ships. However, Egypt is able to deploy and detect aquatic mines. Going against Nigeria would be tricky for Egypt because of the distance between the two and Nigeria's superiority in military personnel. However, deploying the Navy and the Air Force would be the best option for Egypt as Nigeria would have just a quarter of air and sea attack compared to Egypt. And with the main army base headquarters in the center of Nigeria, transportation for Nigerian artillery would be a problem. If Egypt somehow was able to neutralize Nigeria, South Africa would be the last competition Egypt would have to quell. However, this is where Egypt would come up short. By now, moving a fleet all the way across Africa and probably facing resistance along the way would be a logistical and financial nightmare for Egypt. 
that the better option would be to sit and wait in defense, knowing that South Africa would plan to move north to combat Egypt on land. Wars are won by elimination of important factors like bases or heads of states. Most armies would also want to use the least amount of resources to achieve the greatest result, and as Egypt would be going against the whole continent of Africa, there are just too many opponents and a vast land space to cover. So in a fantasy battle between Egypt and Africa, the chances for Egypt would be extremely slim and most tactics and scenarios would not work in favor of Egypt just because the continent is too big to create a stronghold to establish victory. Egypt would use all its resources and ultimately go bankrupt. We can't say it will be the opposite for the rest of Africa as the battle would take a financial and psychological toll to all. Once again, we do not condone violence at Africa Assemble and infighting within our awesome continent would be devastating. Now we turn the question to you. Is there any tactic you may know of that could make a country defeat a whole continent? Better yet, do you think America could defeat the continent of Africa in a full-on war? Share this with a friend and drop a comment if you disagree or would like to request a video. Till then brothers and sisters, Atamana Lak Yaob Sayed.